Good morning. It is a beautiful Sunday out here on the water. It's just Victor and I on the boat today, and what we're going to be doing is fishing with some live baits. We're starting out in 150 feet of water, and I'm gonna put out a pilchard to start out. We got some pilchards and goggle eyes in the live well. All right, here are the pilchards. And what I'm gonna do is hook them down here in the throat, just like that, and toss them out. So today we have a west wind. There's not much wind at all. It's literally flat as glass, but we do have a slight west wind. So what that means is we're going to be blowing offshore. So we're starting our drift in shallower than where we want to end up. So we're starting in 150. We're probably gonna drift out till maybe 250. We'll see how the day goes, figure out where the fish are. So we went fishing actually last Sunday and we didn't use all the goggle eyes from that trip. So we had them in a bait well and we bought fresh pilchards today, but we still had about nine goggle eyes from the last trip. So Victor's gonna hook up a goggle eye now. Ooh, there's a juicy one right there. And with the goggle eye, we're gonna do a wire rig just in case. Um, you're more likely to get a kingfish or a wahoo on the goggle eye, so that's why we have wire on here, just in case something with teeth comes by. So we got a single hook, a treble hook, and I'm gonna cast this gog out as far as possible because these guys do like to sit by the boat a lot of the time. I'm gonna swing them out as far as I can. If you think about it, they're in the live well all day and the only thing out here that they have as refuge is the boat. So they're gonna wanna swim to the boat. So I need them to not see the boat and swim out into the deep. All right, so. Oh, baby. Ooh. So I dropped this vertical jig so that we can be Drifting with these baits as well as doing some jigging and got the first fish on of the day. Seems to be pretty decent. There has been a lot of blackfin tunas around this area recently and I'm thinking this is going to be a blackfin tuna. Come on. What is it? It's a oh, bonita. bonita. Gosh darn it. <laughs> it's a bonita. So you could just unhook them and just keep the boat not bloody. We're not gonna keep him, so I'm just gonna unhook him in the water, let him go. Come on! You stunned him, huh? There he goes. <laughs> he didn't realize he was unhooked there for a second. So this is what I caught him on, little Mustad Moon Riser. I'm probably just gonna keep dropping this all day. It's obviously working. <laughs> Hopefully we get a tuna next time though, not a bonita though. Well, the only fish we caught on that drift was that one bonita. We ended up drifting all the way out to 300 feet. Um, not much action, so I don't really wanna stay in this area. So I'm going to start heading further north, go back in probably to like 150 feet and start our drift out once again. So let's go move and see if we can find some fish. baby um i just put out this gog um victor thought he had a bite on the pilchard on bottom but it got tangled in this line so i brought it in and i literally just put it in the rod holder and it started screaming well it stopped running we have been trying to do everything today to get a fish we have fished multiple wrecks jigging, dropping down baits on the wreck, um, trying all different depths. We've gone from Boca to in front of our Hillsboro Inlet. Now we're in Fort Lauderdale, but finally got what seems to be a good fish on. What do you got? Just saw it, kingfish. Victor had to put the camera down. We had some big tangles that went on. No. I got him. If he's not hooked well, I just want to get him in the boat for you. Victor wanted to get the gaff in him as soon as he can because I could tell he wasn't hooked good. If you look, the treble hook isn't even in him. That hook is barely in that mouth. It's going to pull out so fast. 
So if he got a little bit of slack and turned directions or something, that hook could have came right out. So I ended up gaffing him in the stomach. <laughs> That's okay. He's in the boat. That easily. Did you show that it? That easily. It came out so easy. I knew it wasn't hooked good. Maybe a 10, 12 pound kingfish right there. They got a crazy mouth full of teeth. That's why you see us fishing those goggle eyes with wire. Because if you don't hook them perfectly, you're probably going to lose a fish that has a mouth full of teeth like this. Some days you really got to work for your fish. And we are definitely working for our fish today. We're trying everything that we can. But we finally got a fish in the cooler. And I don't mind eating kingfish. I enjoy eating kingfish. Some people put their nose up to it, but I think they're really good, especially at a smaller size like this. They're perfect for the, I don't know, to throw in the pan, throw on the grill, however you want to cook it. This size is perfect. There's your tuna. You think? I don't know, I think so. Woo -hoo -hoo! This reel does not sound good. <laughs> All right, now this is a pilchard on a flat line. No wire, remember that. No wire, so if it's a toothy fish, you gotta make sure you hooked them good. This is gonna be bigger than that last fish. Oh yeah. It hasn't stopped running. I don't wanna touch the drag. Right? Uh -uh. I mean, I don't know what the drag set, do you? <laughs> Come on, baby. What do you think, Vic? I don't know. Just like you always say, you always tell me, fight it like it's a real fish. Why, you think it's a shark? I don't know. I don't, not yet. Maybe. We'll see. How tight do you think this drag is? You could tighten it a little bit. So give us an update now. I just cleared all the lines for Brooke in case. Um, he stopped running, so I'm gaining line. I got a giant patch of seaweed on my line. There is seaweed out here that has been kind of annoying all day. Which, when you get like a bunch of seaweed on your line, it just causes drag pulling on your line from a different point than you're even pulling on the line. Seaweed's right over there. I'm gonna try to get it off for her here in a second. Your fish is staying up top, which makes me really think it's not a shark. Babe, it's not a shark. Victor loves to say every single thing is a shark. Um, let's drive to this seaweed. What? It's on top again. What is it? I don't know. Not a shark. Hopefully it's not getting freaking attacked. I don't think it's a sailfish because it hasn't jumped yet. I mean... Babe, drive towards it, please. I couldn't tell if it was a sailfish or not. I think it was. I think I saw it still. Victor um, saw it come up and he said it is a sailfish. I don't, this is like the first sailfish I've ever hooked that didn't jump literally one time. Nope. He must be like hooked weird where he doesn't care to jump. Put the boat in gear, we're gonna drive to the sailfish so we can gain some line on him. How far away you think? All right. Come on, Mr. Sailor. This has been the most, there he goes. Woo, finally got a little action out of him, huh? Mm-hmm. Why does it sound so bad? It's been all real. <laughs> He's trying to really shake that hook down. Careful, get on the anchor. No. Got a lot of fighting. The old salty reel just can't handle it, huh? He's an angry sailor. I got him. Okay, you want to tell, say what you're doing? Okay, so I just got my hand on his bill right now. Some gloves because they're pretty abrasive. And Brooks got the boat in gear. And this guy fought a long time, so we don't want to just let him go. So we have the boat in gear, and we're just going to spend like five to ten minutes getting water rushing past his gills. You see he's getting some life back in him. He's getting real spunky. Okay, so we've been reviving him for a while. I'm going to let him go. 
see ya. Good job, Rick. Well, it's always a production when it's just Victor and I on the boat, especially when you catch something like a sailfish, trying to get all the lines in, trying to drive the boat, and trying to catch the fish and properly release it. But we got it done. Good job, Vic. High five. I did not think that was gonna be a sailfish when I first hooked it, but I don't know what I thought it was, but rarely do you catch a sailfish that doesn't jump at all. He shook a little bit at the end, but besides that, he didn't really put on a show, but we released him well, we revived him. Let's see if we can get lines back out and see what else we can catch. Seems like now the afternoon bite might be picking up a little bit, so we'll see what happens. All right, I think I got a tuna on the jig. Oh no, oh he's still there, oh thank goodness. <laughs> It's definitely a tuna. Look at that, look at that rod tip. Oh yeah, baby. I've been wanting to catch a blackfin tuna all day and I think that's what I finally got on the jig. We started another drift. Um, we got into some nice blue water. Please don't be a bonita, please be a blackfin. It's not very big, but it's a blackfin. Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. Woo! A little cutie. Same jig I've been using all day. Caught that bonita. Look at that. It was just sitting in his mouth. <laughs> there we go. A little blackfin tuna. These do not have a size limit. And a fish like this doesn't do well with being released. So although he is small. I'm gonna keep them, but I'll probably bleed them and get them in the ice. Drop back down, see if we can get a little bigger one. Well, I think we're going to reel our lines in and head home. We put some time in today. We caught that kingfish for the dinner table as well as that tuna. Caught a sailfish that I was not expecting to catch. I mean, I wanted to catch a sailfish today, but I didn't think that was a sailfish when it didn't jump at all, so. I mean, we had a great day on the water. I don't know if I'll have time to flay the fish tonight. If I do, I'll flay them tonight, and if not, I'll meet you guys at the fillet table tomorrow to fillet them up. Time to run home. Here we go. beautiful inlets. This big old lighthouse every single time you leave the inlet and come back, it's just so beautiful. And it's also a very safe inlet compared to some that get like big swells and things like that. We are very lucky with a beautiful and oh, yeah. very safe inlet. All right guys, well we are back home. There is a uh, enough time to fillet this guy. This uh, time change allows us to do stuff before it gets dark. <laughs> Unlike when it starts getting dark at like six o'clock. So we got time to flip this king. I'm gonna give him a good spray because he's really slimy. And I'm standing far back. All right, so we sprayed off all the slime and let's get to filleting. Gonna make a cut around his head here. And now I'm going to start from the tail and work my way to the head. And the same thing, keeping my knife on the bones, working towards the backbone. Very nice. And there you go. There's our first half. Push this out of the way. And now we're gonna skin this. So kingfish have extremely thin skin. So to make it easier to fillet this instead of going in one shot, if you break it into sections, it makes it easier. So with the same knife, which is a Dexter eight inch flexible fillet, you guys can save 20% on DexterOutdoors.com. 
with my code Brooke20. I'll have a link in the video description. Let's see how we did. Not too shabby. Missed one little tiny part right there. Since this was that back half, this has all those pin bones in it. So we're gonna just cut this on that side, cut it on this side, get rid of the um, bloodline as well as those bones that are in there. Feed that to my fish friends. Let's see who we got down there today. Catfish, like usual, here they all come. They're swarming. It's Sunday at like 7.30. My parents actually just left to go have dinner. So I'm not gonna be making this for dinner tonight. I think I'm probably gonna make it for lunch, maybe two days from now. So kingfish is something that you really wanna eat fresh. Definitely do not recommend freezing it. But even if we eat it in two days, it's gonna be perfectly fine. It's still gonna be delicious. So I will see you guys in the kitchen in a couple days to make this for lunch. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. So like I said, it has been two days and it is time to get ready to make some lunch. So tonight on the menu is Kingfish Rubens. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I have my Kingfish portioned up into a bunch of pieces here. But my plan is, is after I cook it to kind of break it a little bit before I form my sandwiches. All I'm gonna do is use some black and red fish magic to season these. So I'm gonna just season this side, flip them over, and then season the other side as well. Now, as we're waiting on our pan to get hot so we can cook our fish first, I'm going to just drain this sauerkraut. I'm gonna get rid of all of that juice that's in there. We got two tablespoons of butter in here and a little olive oil. And now we're gonna put our kingfish in. Gonna do probably two batches. And this is the entire kingfish that we're making today. So as we're waiting on our fish to cook, we got some beautiful fresh rye bread. And I want the bigger pieces, so I bought two loaves so that I could get the bigger pieces. So we're gonna start forming our sandwiches now little ones away. So the first thing I want to do for the sandwiches is butter the outside of the bread. All right, it's time to flip. The next component of our sandwiches is Thousand Island dressing. Could you make this yourself 100%? Am I going to? No. <laughs> so we're going to put this on both sides of our bread. Next step is the sauerkraut. And this is going to be for three sandwiches, so we're just gonna put one layer of the sauerkraut. I'm not gonna put it on the top and bottom, just on one side. Next thing is I went for non-smoked provolone. Um, I don't really care for that smoky flavor. I think that you could also do Swiss cheese if you like, but I am not a Swiss cheese fan, so I went with provolone. And we're gonna do two slices on each bread. Just like that. So I just broke open the biggest chunk and it's finished. So I'm gonna take these off the heat now. Toss in another two tablespoons of butter. Go in with our second batch of fish. So now we're going to take our fish and I'm gonna try to like smash it a little bit as I put it 
on this spread. Falls apart nice and easily. We got our panini maker that I think we can fit three sandwiches on at a time. That's why I made three. Flip this over. One. Two. And three. And close her up. I think we're ready. Oh yeah. Look at that. Beautiful. The cheese is all melty. We got that beautiful golden brown on the toast. Look at that. Ooh, yeah. All right. I need three people. That's all I can do right now. So the first three people, come on up. Technically, everyone could have a half right now. No, it's a good idea. Yeah. Oh yeah, baby. There you go, guys. Enjoy. Brooke, these sandwiches are delicious. And I read all the comments that everybody says. I, I've, I read almost every single comment on both Victor's and Brooke's channel. And we were confused about Kingfish because so many of my neighbors, you know, talk down on them. But I'll tell you what. Um, people corrected me in the comments. They're like, we eat kingfish where we're from and we love them. And it's one of the second most expensive fish at the market. And I love kingfish. You know, if it's, if it's taken care of and cooked fresh and cooked nice, this kingfish sandwich is absolutely delicious. Agreed. There's so much garbage up there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even me, I'll think, oh man, we're gonna eat kingfish, right? And then you bite into it and it's like, what was I thinking? I just um, came home from my parents' house and now I'm editing the video and the clip of everyone talking about how delicious the sandwiches were has no audio, so. Luckily, Jed is here, so he's gonna give his review right now. <laughs> so, I'm a sucker for a good sandwich, and that sandwich was fire. Um, I, for one, love kingfish. I don't know why people have such a hard time. You can cook things like the right way and the wrong way, and this is definitely the right way to, king cook, to cook kingfish. So, 100%, looking forward to doing it again. I uh, love good Reuben. I'm gonna tell you guys something. Brick and I fished Sunday, which is the day that you guys are seeing from this video. We also fished the next day, Monday. Sunday we caught kingfish, Monday we caught wahoo. We ate both of them within 24 hours of each other. A lot of people, especially in our area, turn their nose up to kingfish, but you know, Brick made this beautiful kingfish Reuben sandwich, which might get you out of your comfort zone and try to kingfish from time to time. Or something like a wahoo, which we had yesterday, it's a lot easier to dry out because it doesn't have that oil content. It's a very lean, bland fish, which makes it perfect for something like sushi and sashimi. So I think when people compare fish and they're like, oh, you know, kingfish is trash, wahoo is far superior, depends on what you're talking about. Of course, when you're talking about sushi, sashimi, wahoo's up here, kingfish is down here. Beautiful and delicious sandwich. Good job, Ricky. Well, thankfully we have not had an audio issue in a very long time. I don't know why that entire cook had audio besides the last clip of me asking everyone what they thought about the fish, but that Kingfish Reuben might be my favorite way I've ever ate Kingfish before. It was absolutely delicious. I think you could make a Reuben with any kind of fish. I know I've done it with blackfin tuna before. I feel like I've done it with another species of fish, but I think anything cooked like that with that Reuben would be really good. Like Victor said, we caught Wahoo yesterday. And I'll tell you what, the vibe on the boat when you catch a Wahoo compared to a Kingfish is very different. When we, Kingfish got on the boat, you know, we were just like, oh, it's another Kingfish, but they taste good, you know, like we eat them. But when that Wahoo got on the boat yesterday, I was jumping up and down, so excited. It just has a completely different vibe. 
And you guys may like kingfish or you may not like kingfish. Where we live in this area, there is a lot of people who turn their nose up to kingfish. You hear it all the time. Oh, I don't eat kingfish. I don't eat kingfish. I only eat a smoked fish dip. But if you know, if you know how to properly cook your kingfish, you can make it taste absolutely delicious. There are certain ways you do not want to eat kingfish. Um, my dad had mentioned um, back at the house that we had wahoo seared and it was like raw in the center. You would not want to eat kingfish like that, but wahoo cooked like that, absolutely delicious. Um, I've made kingfish ceviche before. I would not recommend doing that. So there are certain ways that you should cook certain fish and certain ways you shouldn't cook certain fish. Kingfish has a Reuben, one of the best sandwiches I've had, like, hands down. So don't turn your nose up to the fish. It is really good. Just cook it the way that it should be cooked for certain species. Um, on Thursday, Victor and I are going to Mexico. I am very excited to go back there and hopefully we'll get some great videos for you guys. Um, until then, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video.